Pandas data frames and series expose a vast array of methods that simplify data analysis. These include functions that compute common moments, such as the mean and variance, quantiles and extremes, and covariance and correlation. Most functions operate column by column in data frames, treating each column as a variable. Data frames also expose a large collection of methods that provide information about the data frame or simplify data manipulation, such as removing or filling missing observations. Start by opening the Lesson 9 notebook. Run the first cell to load some data frames and series we created in an earlier lesson. This cell also constructs returns from the prices data frame using percent changes. The first problem asks us to use multiplication and sum to compute the returns of an equally weighted portfolio. Data frames expose more than 100 methods. We will only discuss a small subset of these that we will repeatedly use in the course. Some of the most useful are statistical functions. Univariate statistics operate column by column in a data frame. They all return a series where the index of the series corresponds to the column names in the data frame on which the method was invoked. Some key examples of built-in univariate moment estimators include mean, variance, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis. Sum, while not a moment, has the same behavior as these other functions, and so is included here. Data frames expose a complete set of methods for computing quantiles and extremums. The median function returns the median. The max and the min functions return the extreme values of a series or the columns of a data frame. The quantile method extends the median method to arbitrary quantiles. When called with a scalar quantile, it returns a series and so operates like median. When called with a list of quantiles, the quantile method returns a data frame where the rows are the quantiles and the columns match the data frame on which the method was invoked. Start by importing NumPy. First, we create a vector of weights. There are three assets, and so the vector should contain one-third three times. We can use np.ones to create a vector containing all ones, and then divide by three to make these elements one-third. The weighted returns are then computed using star to multiply the data frame of returns by the array. Sum is then used to add the elements. We need to use axis equals 1 here to sum across the rows. If we did not use this optional argument, then the default value of axis equals 0 would sum down columns. Finally, we can examine the portfolio returns, which are a series. The sum operation reduces the dimension from 2, a data frame, to 1, a series. The mean is computed using the mean method. By default, the mean is computed column by column. We can compute the mean for the series containing the returns of each of the three tickers. We assign the means to variables and then use print to show their values. Since we have all of the returns in a single data frame, we can also use the mean method on the data frame, which operates column by column. The mean method returns one value for each column, and so loses a dimension. This type of operation is known as a reduction.
Standard deviation is computed using the method std on a data frame or series. It also operates column by column on a data frame, and so the return value is a series with one entry per column. Data frames expose methods to compute covariance and correlation. These both return a data frame where both the index and the column names are derived from the column names of the data frame where the method was invoked. The correlation of the elements of a data frame is computed using the core method. Each column contains a variable. This function returns a data frame with the column names of the input data frame used as both the column names and the index of the correlation matrix. Sum is used to add all of the values in a column. Sum is like mean, a reduction, and so returns a series when called on a data frame. We can use the shape property to see the shape of a data frame or a series. Running this cell returns a tuple with a number of rows and the number of columns. We get the number of observations by accessing the first element of the shape tuple. The sum and the mean are related by multiplying the mean by the number of observations. Maximum and minimum values use the max and min methods. First, call the min method. Then, call the max method. These are both reductions that operate column by column, and so the data frame loses a dimension and the output is a series. The final task asks us to explore the different methods to round. Let's take a look at 100 times returns. These values all fall into the small single digit range. The round method of a data frame rounds values to the nearest integer by default. Here, I will use round as a method on the product of 100 times returns. This shorthand syntax is creating a data frame from 100 times returns and then applying round to this data frame. It saves us from explicitly assigning this temporary value to a variable. Returns are rounded up using the seal command. This is not available as a data frame method, and so we must use the numpy seal function. Floor is virtually identical and so uses the numpy floor function. These values are all less than the sealed values. There are a few mathematical functions worth covering. There are a set of cumulative functions that apply a function cumulatively. That is, first using the first row, then using the first two rows, then using the first three rows, and so on. These all return a data frame with the same shape, index, and columns as the original data frame. ABS computes the absolute value, element by element, and so also returns an identical data frame. Finally, dot can be used to perform matrix multiplication using the rules of linear algebra on two data frames. There are many functions that provide information about a data frame. Count returns the number of non-missing values in each column. Describe produces a data frame of descriptive statistics for each column. Head and tail show the first and last five rows, respectively, of a data frame. Sort index and sort values perform sorting. And dim can be used to get the number of dimensions of a data frame or a series. It returns one when called on a series and two when called on a data frame. Shape returns the number of items in each dimension. 
When used on a data frame, shape returns the number of rows in the first position and the number of columns in the second. Transpose is used to swap rows and columns. We will use it through the .t shortcut. Drop an A removes missing values. There are two inputs worth mentioning for this common function. How determines whether observations are dropped if any observations are missing, or if all observations are missing. Axis can be used to drop either rows, which usually correspond to observations, or columns, which usually correspond to variables. All and any are logical aggregation functions that we will see in a later lesson. Diff computes the arithmetic difference of adjacent elements. Percent change computes the percentage change of adjacent elements, and we've seen it used to construct returns. Finally, shift moves the values in a data frame while leaving the index unchanged, and so shift1 can be used to backshift data. Pandas data frames provide more than 100 methods, including many that simplify data analysis. Key built-in statistics include moment estimation, mean, variance, skewness, and kurtosis, quantile estimation, and correlation analysis. These statistical functions operate column by column and are missing value aware. Data frames also expose a complete palette of methods to manipulate the data in a data frame, including describing the contents of a data frame, sorting, and removing or filling missing values.